So relapsed refractory Hodgkin lymphoma is, I would argue, still an area of unmet need. Um, our chance of curing it with sort of standard chemotherapy and autologous stem cell transplant approaches is around the 50% mark. Um, uh, our use of more targeted agents, brentuximab and pembrolizumab, maybe are increasing uh, that, which is great. Um, but there are still patients, and they're often young and fit patients, who suffer multiple relapses. Some patients we may um, offer an allogeneic stem cell transplant, but that's very high risk. So many patients are actually turning that down. And even after that, some patients continue to relapse. So, uh, you know, it's really crucial that we still do develop new agents in, the, in that space. There are some new checkpoint inhibitors coming out. So um, one checkpoint inhibitor, for example, is tislalizumab. Now, I would strongly argue that not all checkpoint inhibitors are the same. I have to say pembrolizumab and nivolumab, it's very hard to tell the difference between the two. So they, they are not the same, but it, it's quite hard to find a difference. Tislalizumab looks like it may be different. It certainly binds to different epitopes on its target, and it has a much slower off kinetic, you know, when you look at its um, uh, kinetics of binding to PD-1. And in a uh, in the licensing trial that was performed in China, um, the uh, complete metabolic remission rate was over 50%. I mean, this is very high and much higher than we would have expected for nivolumab or pembrolizumab. So maybe uh, that will prove to be a more effective PD-1 inhibitor, but it needs further testing. Um, but these, some, some trials are planned using that agent. There are also other approaches such as cellular therapy, so CAR T cell therapy. There is a CD30 directed CAR T. Um, it's interesting in that it seems to produce good and fairly durable remissions. It's relatively small number of patients, though, still that are treated. Um, one of the sort of particular side effects that you don't really see with a CD19 directed is a rash. Uh, it's a very specific rash, and it may actually be due to a sort of on target effect of the CAR T, but it's well tolerated and, and it settles spontaneously, so it's not a big problem. Problem. And I think seeing CAR T develop further for this small uh, patient group with relapsed refractory uh, Hodgkin lymphoma is, is very important. There are also other very interesting approaches. So, one interesting approach are bispecific antibodies. So there are some antibodies which target not just PD-1, but also another checkpoint such as TIM-3. And what might happen there is you might predict that may overcome some of the resistance that we see with PD-1 inhibitors. Don't know yet. You know, it needs to be formally trialed, and it is being formally trialed, but we don't have results. Um, but it'll be interesting to see that approach. And also, there are agents which target um, CD30 and CD16, which is on NK cells. The idea there that you might bring these cells to the Reed Sternberg cell. Now, just using that agent alone or in combination with pembrolizumab, to be honest, didn't particularly generate interesting results. But what is an interesting approach is uh, one group in the US. Um, uh, the MD Anderson has preloaded uh, NK cells with this drug, AFM13, and then infused them into patients. And you almost see what looks to be like a sort of car effect really happening there. So some quite encouraging responses, which are uh, looking like they're relatively durable, albeit with fairly short follow-up currently. So, um, a, a, you know, very interesting approach there. So lots of things happening. There are also small molecules being tested. There's a CDK9 inhibitor, which you might predict would work well in Hodgkin, looking at some of the... Um, uh, proteins that are around in, in Hodgkin lymphoma, some of the anti-apoptotic proteins. So yeah, lots um, of development happening.